Hey guys, what's up? It is Sam from Harky Fishing, and uh, man, I've got a, a kind of an interesting video. We had a uh, what I would call a tragic moment the other day, and uh, um, we uh, what I experienced at a weigh in uh, just kind of made me sad, it, it broke my heart. Um, we had a guy that was fishing that's brand new to tournament fishing. He's never fished tournaments before uh, until this year, and uh, he's gotten into tournament fishing, and uh, and he's been so excited. And uh, last Wednesday night, he had a great night. Um, it was really tough fishing. So uh, you guys that saw my video fishing report um, had a great plan, but uh, all great plans don't always come together to end up with great results. And uh, we ended up having uh, about seven and just shy of seven and a quarter. I think we had seven, 17 or seven, 14. And uh, we were just one place out of the money. The fishing was awful, 12 pounds one, um, seven and a quarter got money. And uh, so it was bad fishing, but this guy had found some and uh, had a, you know, for the night had a great deal. He had a nine and a half pounds. He ended up placing third but he got disqualified. And uh, the reason why he didn't realize that in bass tournaments, uh, you have to uh, be there on time, which he was there on time. But um, at this particular tournament, they gave us a poker chip that had his boat number on it. I don't even remember what boat number he was, but he had his boat number on that. And our, our rules state that by the end of the tournament at 11 o'clock, that poker chip has to be back in a little coffee cup that's there on the dock. And uh, he didn't realize that. He just kept the coffee, he kept the poker chip in his pocket all the whole time. Well, when he weighed his fish, they said, your token has not been turned in. You can't weigh your fish. And so he was disqualified. And I know it broke his heart. For one, he lost some cash. But uh, for two, you know, he worked hard for that. And actually, he'd fished several tournaments, but this was the first one. He'd had a good limit of fish and, uh, and weighed in and did really good in the tournament. And uh, so it got me to thinking, what does a person need to know for their first bass fishing tournament? You're ready to fish bass fishing tournaments. Maybe you've done it recreationally and, and, uh, you're just kind of, uh, you're curious. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I love fishing tournaments. As you guys know, we fish a lot of bass fishing tournaments and, uh, and all of them are a little bit different, but for the most part, they're kind of the same. And so I thought let's put together something, a video here that states what you should do for your first bass fishing tournament. So let's cut through the chase. Um, the first things first, when you pay your entry fee, and some of them are pay at the ramp, some of them you register online. Um, when you do that, you normally either receive a, uh, uh, a chip or a boat number is what we're going to officially call it. Now, uh, on Wednesday nights, we get a poker chip that has your uh, boat number on it. Um, on our Friday uh, evening tournaments, we get a, a, a wooden paddle that has our boat number on it. Um, we fish a couple of like two and 300 boat tournaments. On that, they actually email you and say, hey, your boat number, you know, 178 and you're in flight five. Um, and so when you get that boat number, that number is extremely important. Um, what is going to happen then on, on these smaller tournaments where you get an actual physical boat number token or paddle or whatever you want to call it? Um, when you get that, it has to be back returned to the tournament operator. And if you don't know who that is, you know, find out and find out what do I do with this token? Where do I put it at weigh in time? Um, in our case, there's always a little coffee cup on the end of the boat ramp where you or the boat dock uh, courtesy slip where you drop that token back in. Um, on the big tournaments, a lot of times there's a, a, a person um, that's out on uh, the edge of the dock or whatever waiting on you to idle by. And when you idle by, you let them know, hey, I was boat, you know, 168 and I'm checking in. And uh, you got to let them know and they'll write down the time that you got there so that they know you got back on time and that you're there. So if it's your first tournament, that boat number thing is extremely important. So what else do you need to know? That's I, that, like I said, after that heartbreak of seeing him do so well and then just break his heart because he didn't win um, third place, um, I hated that. And I don't know if he'll keep fishing tournaments or not. I hope he will. Um, I explained to him yet what he needed to do in the future and stuff. And I don't even run the tournament. I just, I just hate that because I know how exciting it is when you finally catch that good limit and you may win some money and, uh, you know, albeit a little or a bunch or whatever, but you didn't know the rules or didn't know... Um, what to do with that and, and fail. 
So I got to thinking, what do you need to know? That's the first thing is when you get that boat number, uh, um, you know, be there. A couple other tips for you, have a way bag. Um, you know, some tournaments do provide way bags and in the rules, it'll state that. Um, in the bigger tournaments, usually they have a set number of way bags. Um, and that's a good thing. They don't want 70 people in line with their fish in a little bitty bag that has hardly any oxygen where the water's getting warm. Um, they don't want that. Um, so they'll have like 20 way bags. And if there's not a bag, you'll wait in line to get a bag. That way there's never more than, you know, 15 or so people in line to weigh their fish. On the smaller tournaments, uh, you may have to provide your own bag. And uh, so remember a way bag and bring a way bag. Um, the other thing is, uh, you know, fish care. Um, if I could really stress to you, um, fish care. It's summer right now and it's hot. Um, if you live in the country and you have a well, well water is usually cool. So, uh, you know, fill your live wells with, uh, with cold well water and then run them on recirculate. Don't pump new hot lake water in there. Um, add some uh, G juice or some live well additive to help keep those fish healthy. And then always have uh, either have some weights ready um, to help keep those fish weighted down if you catch them deep or uh, if you're good at fizzing a fish and if you haven't watched our video on fizzing a fish um, just check back through our, our channel it's got a good video on how to fizz a fish um, but those fish that are caught deep sometimes their air bladder fills up and you need to either relieve that air or help them sink to the bottom of the live well so they can kind of i don't know if you burp up or whatever they do to to equalize that air bladder and keep them alive so you know, I guess those are the kind of the main tips. If you're a seasoned tournament angler, this was the most boring video you ever watched. But if you are thinking about getting into it, you know, man, don't forget these tips because uh, it'll save you some heartbreak uh, that I saw Wednesday night. And, uh, you know, so check that out. And I uh, hope that helps some of you guys. Uh, the rest of you guys may have been bored, but I hope it helped you guys. Um, otherwise, get out there on the water, man. Keep your lines wet and have a good time. Uh, if you uh, are at home, man, cherish family time. Gosh, that's what we're doing out here today. We're on the porch and uh, just enjoying a beautiful day. So till next time, good luck, good fishing. Take care, man, uh, and keep your lines wet.